We've had people on that have been both part of the Republican National Convention and a part of the Democratic National Convention. And the lady we have on the line right now is no exception to that. Not only is she the first Latina state senator that Nevada's ever had, she also spoke at the DNC, and we're very happy to have her on the line. That is Ivana Kinsella joining us right now on the line. Ivana, thank you so much for joining us. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing okay. How are you? Doing great. I'm doing Thanks, good. Ivana. So, Ivana, I have to ask you a lighthearted question uh, to start. We've been kind of poking a little bit of fun at Kimberly Guilfoyle. Uh, and and that and that speech she did, particularly the last twenty seconds. Uh, what did you make of that? Am I wrong in saying she was a little crazy in that speech? What did you make of that? As a... I mean, I, I don't know what went through her head, and perhaps the excitement of being on stage is what led to her having more of an opera like performance than a speech. But, you know, she, she had her moment. Way to make her fifteen minutes of fame last right, right. a whole half hour. That is for sure. Well. Uh, Glad to have you on. A lot of questions to get to in a short period of time. Before we get to the DNC and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, let's talk about your reaction so far to the RNC, particularly the vice president's speech last night. I was very surprised, but I guess maybe we shouldn't be, that Mike Pence didn't even mention uh, the uh, the black man who was shot in Wisconsin. Didn't talk about that. Didn't talk about the two protesters uh, who were shot either. What did you make of the vice president's speech last night? Well, I... I caught snippets of it on Twitter. I didn't watch the whole thing. Um, the entirety to me of the Republican convention has felt like the like an alternate re- reality in a lot of ways in that there has been fear-mongering and the talk of what the world could look like as a socialist country, but not enough talk about what's actually happening, which is that more than 150,000 people have died of COVID-19, that we have civil unrest in a number of our cities because... Our black sisters and brothers are crying out for justice. And the lack of connection to what's really happening in America is concerning when it's the people in charge that are holding their convention this week. Mm, I, th- I think that's well said. Certainly, I agree with that. Um, what What has been your interaction with Republicans and speaking about this global pandemic and the racial divide as a as a sitting senator I mean is there any work and working across the aisle where Republicans are working with you guys to try to come up with solutions here so we spent a good chunk of this summer up in special sessions um, working across the aisle to create solutions for the problems that Nevadans are facing, whether it's unemployment or housing, the bills related to those issues came out in a bipartisan fashion because while D.C. politics under Trump's leadership may mean that Republicans are in a totally different um, reality than what the rest of the country is experiencing. In Carson City, that wasn't the case, and I'm really proud of the work we did to address the issues Nevadans are facing. Let's talk about the DNC. You were obviously a part of that, and you did a great job. Let's talk a little bit about Kamala Harris first, Uh, Joe Biden's pick, VP. Uh, I've always said about her she's an extremely intelligent woman. I thought she'd make a great vice president eight, nine months ago. I speculated that. What do you make of that pick? What do you think of Kamala Harris? She's a phenomenal pick and will be an excellent vice president. And for us here in Nevada, we're so lucky to have someone who understands Western politics and Western demographics, hopefully heading to the White House. She has a track record of speaking on Western issues, whether it's water policy or the diversity that our state and that the Western region as a country has. And she's ready to lead on day one, which to me is really important. I agree with you. Let's talk about Joe Biden now. Now, I can only speak for myself and say that the reason why I am supporting Joe Biden, if nothing else, is the fact that I believe Joe Biden is a decent, good human being with empathy, which I believe is the opposite of Donald Trump. With that being said, a lot of people want to talk about what are his policies? What is he going to do? Is it, you know, are we going to see socialism? Is Joe Biden going to defund the police? That's what I hear from a lot of Republicans. Can you please speak to that, Senator? Can you talk about that and the actual meat and potatoes of Joe Biden and what would his presidency look like? Well, let's. I agree with you that he is a man of empathy and leadership, and I'm supporting him because I believe that he's the right leader for our country in this extremely important moment. He has been in the U.S. Senate, he's been in the executive branch, and he won't need anyone to tell him what to do to get to work on day one. That's really important. He has put out policies on everything from climate change to immigration to health care and has surrounded himself with the foremost experts on everything from foreign to domestic policy. 
to not only ensure that he's ready to work on day one, but that the American people know what to expect from his presidency. Mm -hmm. So, and all of them are available on JoeBiden.com, and we spend the rest of our time together going through um, specific planks. But I think what's most important and what's at the core of all of his policies is ensuring that Americans have an opportunity to get to and stay in the middle class, and that there are opportunities for regular Americans to see that there are pathways out of having to work four to five jobs just to stay poor. He really sure. puts the economic success of Americans at the forefront of his policy because he understands what it means for a family to have that kind of stability sure. and to have the opportunities that they need to get ahead through public education, through high quality, affordable health insurance, all while addressing the crises that our country is facing through the pandemic, through climate change, and through the economic recession that we're confronting. Yes, very, very well said. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Ivana Kinsella. She's the first Latina state senator in the great state of Nevada. She also spoke at the DNC. I have to ask you, as a woman of color, when Donald Trump is speaking about the squad, I'm sure you remember this moment, where three of those four members of the squad were born in the United States of America, and Donald Trump, in particularly speaking ab uh, about them, said that they should go back to where they came from. When even three of the four were born in this country. As a woman of color, what is going through your mind, and what do you make of that when he attacks these women uh, the way he did and says, basically, go back to where you came from when three of the four were born here to begin with? Well, it's not surprising, considering that he started his presidency by calling Mexican rapists and criminals, and that he's made a cornerstone of his presidency attacking immigrants and figuring out every policy possible to deny entry into this country. So when he says that, it's an extension of his fundamental belief that those who are not from this country can't make it better, can't be a part of the fabric of our country, and it is the opposite of what I believe, and as the daughter of Cuban immigrants who worked, who has two parents who worked really hard to make sure that I had every opportunity I was given. It's painful to hear those words coming from the highest ranking leader of our country. And it's also what motivates me to ensure that he doesn't have another four years in the White House. Do you think, Senator, that the president of the United States, Donald Trump, is a racist? I don't know what goes through Donald Trump's heart and mind. I know that his policies have racist underpinnings. I know that he has said things that are intended to stoke hate more than unity. I know that he has done everything possible to pin different groups against each other. And all of that, to me, whether he is a racist or not, is indicative of someone who's unfit to lead our country. Are you worried a little, Senator, that there is, an op there is certainly a, a strong possibility, I think this is a very close race, that Donald Trump could win? Are you worried about that? Because, you know, if you recall back in 2016, I've been right with every race except for what took place in 2016. I thought Hillary was going to win. I thought it was going to be a landslide. And even though she won the popular vote, we know what the end result was. I thought Hillary made mistakes when she was running. I didn't think she went to the battleground states. I didn't think she did the interview she should have done. I didn't think she campaigned very well. Are you concerned and are you worried that Joe Biden, and this has been one of my criticisms of Joe Biden thus far, I don't think he's doing enough interviews. I don't think he's out there enough. Do you think that is a fair criticism, number one? And do you think, even though you're working your butt off to try to get you know Donald Trump out of office, and I applaud you for that because I'm not a supporter of Donald Trump, are you concerned that there is a reality here that Donald Trump has a good chance to win the election in November? I think it's going to be a very close election, and it's going to take everyone who can vote exercising their right to vote uh, this cycle to ensure that Trump does not end up in the White House again. I, I believe that we are doing exceptional work here in Nevada, not only in meeting the changes to how electioneering is happening because of the pandemic, but also to ensure that voters not only know why it's so important to elect Joe Biden and that voters know how to access the ballot box uh, this November. I think the vice president has done a really great job at making himself as available as possible to local media markets. And maybe we don't see him on cable news often because cable news and different media outlets are covering a host of other issues. And in my opinion, he's been willing and ready and has done a ton of interviews, but they don't always get the yeah. coverage that they could get because 
there's a lot of other stuff going on. Understood. But, yeah, understood. Um, yep. And and for the record, we have had uh, Dr. Jill Biden has been nice enough to come on our show. We would love Jill Biden uh, to join us. So this is a criticism that I hear from the right, Senator. And I wanted to bring this up with you. And and and, and listen, I, I think uh, it's a responsibility of the leader of the free world, Donald Trump, and then all the way down when it comes to everything, including the pandemic and the silver unrest in this country. But from what I hear from a lot of Republicans, they want to blame Democratic governors for some of the civil unrest that is taking place in certain cities and states across the country. What would you say to those people that say that and that the governors have done a poor job in policing certain cities and, you know, and what's taking place, for example, in Milwaukee right now? What would you say to that? I'd say it's a deflection from the root cause. The civil unrest we're seeing is a crying out for justice on behalf of our black sisters and brothers who no longer want to see their families and people who look like them murdered by police officers. And that until we are talking about the history of systemic racism in our country, until we are doing the community healing to ensure that people feel heard, that change is made to reflect what those most affected by the problem are demanding, that it's very easy to place blame um, at and ignore the root cause, and that those kinds of sentiments further exacerbate the problem because we shouldn't be looking, we shouldn't be talking about whether or not we should be arresting more protesters. We should be talking about why people are protesting in the first place. Yeah, and, and I, cer- I certainly agree with that. Before we let you go, there are people out there that are still undecided. I don't think there's many of them, but I think you would agree with me. Those are really important votes that the Democrats need if they want to get Donald Trump out of office. So I give you the platform now for the people that are listening to this show. We, we cover both sides here. There are people that are independents like myself. I've already made my decision, but there are independents out there that are listening. And I want you to talk to them right now and make the case. Make the case, Senator. Why should people put Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in office and not give Donald Trump another four years? Because we have the opportunity to fundamentally change the direction that our country is going in. We have a man in the White House who has demonstrated that he is incapable of meeting the challenges that our country is facing. We did not have to lose 160,000 Americans to the pandemic and be more behind than any other nation in addressing the pandemic and its issues. We have the opportunity to elect Joe Biden, who has the experience to put our country on track, along with Senator Kamala Harris, who understands how important it is to put the needs of Americans first, not the needs of corporations or business cronies, not the needs of oneself to see them to see themselves on TV, but to genuinely lead this country with empathy and leadership. And I think it's more needed now than ever. Absolutely. Well, Senator, let me just say this. First of all, congratulations on being the first Latina state senator in Nevada. It was a long time coming. We need more people like you representing uh, not just the state of Nevada, but this country. So I think you're doing a fantastic job. Please keep up the great work. And uh, I think you have an extremely bright future for sure. Uh, And maybe some higher and even better places than a state senator, if that makes any sense. But I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you so much, Senator. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Sure, you bet. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ivan. Uh,